back from where they had run away to Europe and they, many of them, millions of them came back and he said okay I'm going to make you a state official and put you back on the board that you were on before as a private person and many of them came back because they were Russians they felt at home there they went home but it really was a kind of state intervention and it certainly didn't change the organization of the factory and of the enterprise the workers who had come to work before 17 worked real hard produced profit that a board of directors got after the revolution they came all day they worked real hard and the profits went to a group of state officials the workers had no more to do with the one than with the other this was not a fundamental change the workers didn't take over nothing of the sort happened Then in 1989, what did Russia do? It did exactly what we've already seen. It oscillated back the other way. There was a crisis in their state-controlled economy. It had built up over the 70s and 80s, and by the end of the 1980s, Gorbachev, Yeltsin, the whole story, and that came to an end, and we went back to a government withdrawal. The government now privatizes. The government has made private what used to be government enterprises all over Russia. The government regulates less. The government intervenes. It's exactly the same story. Germany. Interesting, because it'll give you a wrinkle that the other, the other two don't. Private to 1933. In 1933, the Great Depression hits Germany in 1929, just like it does in the United States. And the economy goes into a terrible tailspin. Massive unemployment. But they have not only got strong trade unions in Germany already at that time, they had an extremely powerful socialist and an extremely powerful communist party. Together the socialists and the communists were getting half the votes in national elections. So we're talking very powerful. So the business community, seeing the economy collapse, seeing the unemployment going crazy in Germany, says to itself, A, our system is falling apart. B, we have real contestants for power from the left. Way more powerful in their society than the left in America was at that time, for example. Or the left in Britain or the left in France. The left in Germany was the most powerful and most organized at that time. So the business community was freaked out. And they understood real quickly that the only way they were going to save themselves. And remember, in Germany, you can't forget in 1933 that it's really only a couple of hours by train from the Russian-Soviet border. It's not America, it's not a big ocean, it's not a long trip. It's real nearby. So they were freaked out. So they had to very quickly find a social force that could rival the strength of the left and squash them. And a little guy with a black mustache and funny hair said, I'm the guy. I can do it. You give me power, 1932, December, in Germany, Adolf Hitler, you give me power, and I'll take care of the left. They gave him power, and he took care of the left. And he set up a state capitalism. State took over massively. But you who, some of you, who might think that when the state takes over, it's always the left version, uh-uh. doesn't have to be. It can be a right-wing version. Hitler was, the state is going to take over, the state is going to get us out of the horrors of the Depression, which he did. He, did he put the German workers back to work? He did. He did. He did it around rebuilding Germany. He also did it around taking over the rest of Europe, or at least trying to. He rebuilt the military that had been defeated in World War One. He did all that. Gave the Germans this sense of purpose, Third Reich, you've all seen the movies late at night. So the state takes over. You have a state kind of capitalism. And it works until Hitler is defeated, 1945. And then an interesting thing happens. You have a crisis. Germany loses the Second World War in 30 years. Hey, that's uh, not good wiped out country, wiped out physically, wiped out industrially, wiped out psychologically, wiped. So the idea then to give it back to the private sector made no sense because there was no private sector. It was, it, was, it was done. 
So another kind of state capitalism happened, but it went from a right-wing state capitalism to a sort of liberally state capitalism. The state helped everything, the state had to, but it wasn't any more fascistic, it wasn't right-wing, it was sort of mildly left, nothing like Russia, not even like FDR. The great man who pulled this together in Germany, a man named Konrad Adenauer, if you ever study the history, interesting man. And so Germany, from 45 to 95, 50 years of rebuilding itself into a powerhouse economy with heavy state involvement. Footnote, examples. What do I mean by heavy state involvement? Let me give you some examples. Uh, Hitler decided that one of the ways to put people back to work is to produce automobiles. And he wanted to produce automobiles for all Germans. A radical idea in 1933. The majority of people had no car in any country. Certainly not this one. But the only way to do that, of course, he thought, he was a state guy. We might nowadays call him a Keynesian. And we should. His, his, his finance minister, a very famous man named Hjalmar Schacht, was a Keynesian. If you read his work, it's Keynesian economics. In any case, he decided to build a people's car. And the way you say people's car in German is Volkswagen. Wagen is car, Volk is people. Volks, car of the people. So the car of the people, and Adenauer stayed right with it. It was a government, it only became private decades later. It's a government car industry. The government, of course, does that. Just like in France, the basic car that became the mass car is the Renault, which is still owned by the government in France to a large extent. Not, they're not the sole owners anymore, but they used to be. So you had a, a right-wing state capitalism fade into a left of center, wouldn't want to call it leftism, and then in 1995 they made the transition to private. And for the last 15 or whatever it is, years, 12 years, and now as the crisis is overwhelming Germany, the same one that's overwhelming us, they're making the transition back to state. And again, it's the Adenauer type. It's the, the transition back to state is a peculiar German political leader, a woman, Angela Merkel, whose political formation was as a communist official in East Germany, that's what she comes from, who became deeply Christian when it was politically useful, what? And relatively conservative, but not all that much. She's again that peculiar German, she's very flexible. Her whole life is one of extraordinary flexibility. And she's now flexibility into the state because the private, short little period of kind of a private economy has been such a disaster. And now she's in trouble because as the country trends down, the left is getting stronger, fast in Germany, and she has to figure out how to do that. Over the last three or four days, you've been watching her move to the left in areas that are not yet too controversial. For those of you that are Roman Catholic, or that even if you're not, but you care about what the Pope says and doesn't, the Pope made a decision last week, or whatever it was the week before, to bring some bishops that had been pushed out of the church back into the church. And one of them, a bishop named Williamson, I think in uh, in America, British, I believe, Scottish or something, uh, was wont to go around giving interviews around the world about how Jews were killed in the war and and the anti-Holocaust and all that. And so the, the Pope, the Vatican, gave out that the Pope wasn't aware of this at the time he made the decision. And if you believe that, I have a bridge I will sell you. But in any case, um, he said it. And I certainly don't know one way or the other. But in any case, he said it. And Merkel went after him. And she has kept after him every day. She beats up on the Pope. She calls him on the phone with a full press in the room. And ber- it was really amazing, you know, you don't have that very well. And berates the Pope and has gotten him to move to adjust. The Pope, I think, has, has now demanded that this bishop uh, recant these things. And, uh, you know, he, it's amazing. And that's her positioning as she discovers that she's got to make the, the shift back to state capitalism, which is difficult to do in any society and requires very deft political maneuvering if you're going to survive in your career while making that transition. Last thing, in the third world, you have the same peculiar thing. In the colonial period, up to the end of Second World War, the government was involved in every colony. 
governments controlled colonies. And the reasons the British government controlled the British Empire and the French the French and the Spanish the Spanish and so on was in order to make these colonies pay. It costs money to run a colony. You have to have troops stationed there in case the local folk don't like you. You have to uh, build some roads. You have to have some railroads. You have to, you have to do stuff. You even have to invest some money to make them pay. But then you want them to produce the kind of things that will make your metropolitan economy work. So Britain, for example, uh, for those of you not familiar, Britain, the British society became wealthy and the British Empire became powerful around one fundamental industry. And that was textiles, cotton textiles. The British Empire produced the best at the time world's cotton cloth and the whole world was its place to sell this for clothing it wiped out all the local clothing producers all the local weavers all the local spinner all that was wiped out in one country after another as the British got everyone to wear cotton clothing which nobody had worn before the only problem was if the British Empire depended on selling cotton cloth you all understand, in order to make cotton cloth, you need cotton. And if you ever visit England, it'll take you about two to three seconds from someplace else. Now, for a long while, the someplace else was here, the South. And the British had it all worked out. They gathered slaves from Africa or shipped them to the American South where they produced the cotton, which was shipped to the factories in England, which produced the cloth, which made the country rich. Notice, crucial to the rise of the British Empire's wealth are black slaves. Crucial to the rise of the American country's wealth, selling cotton to England was the same slaves. And 